usual by Dr. Joe Kanner of the Louisiana Department of Health. He will explain in more detail than I exactly where we are on this fourth, fourth surge of COVID, what the data shows, what the trends are, um, and what we know. Uh, let me again, uh, begin, I should say, uh, by congratulating uh, this week's winners at the Shot, a, uh, Shot at a Million campaign. Uh, yesterday I was able to speak with both Stephen Curry, who was the $100,000 cash prize winner, uh, and Jacob Ardwan. Uh, he was the $100,000 scholarship winner. Uh, I'm excited uh, for both of them. Uh, I thank them for making uh, the decision to be vaccinated in the first place and then for uh, entering and winning, I congratulated them. Uh, and uh, I can tell you that, that Jacob is, is looking forward to going to UL or LSU and getting a technology-related degree. And I think Stephen, who, by the way, is not the NBA uh, player, Stephen Curry, uh, and I can demonstrate that by telling you he plans to pay off his car note <laughs> and to maybe do some, uh, some things that um, Mrs. Curry want to do around the house. Uh, more than 1.9 million Louisianans have taken their first shot. Uh, and our vaccine, vaccination rate is going up. You're going to get more information about that in just a moment. Uh, quite frankly, we're not in a good place because not enough people have decided up to now to be vaccinated. It is gratifying to see that those numbers are increasing, uh, but we've got a long way to go, and we need a lot of people to join uh, Stephen and Jacob if we're going to end this pandemic, but also if we're going to protect ourselves. Uh, and and limit the number of people who are going to contract the disease, go into the hospital, uh, and the number that will die. Uh, and that brings me to the more sobering and probably the more important part of today's press conference. We are very unfortunately in a position that we had hoped, that we had prayed, that we would work very hard to avoid. But quite simply, the Delta variant is an absolute game changer, superimposed as it is in Louisiana on a state that is not sufficiently vaccinated. This variant is much more transmissible and is a much more dangerous strain of the virus. Earlier this week, I was able to speak with hospital leaders across the state and every region of the state. And they are seeing more COVID patients now than at any point in the pandemic. And the most distressing portion of this is the rate of growth of hospitalizations for COVID patients. This week alone, we've seen thousands of new cases and hundreds of additional hospitalizations. And the age the ages of the people who are being infected and having serious cases of the disease going to the hospital is different. It is young, it's a younger group of individuals on average. Uh, and by the way, the trends that we are seeing aren't just happening in certain places in our state. They're all over the state, in every region uh, of the state of Louisiana. Just today, we're reporting 5,313 new cases, and those are all within the last seven days, so we're, there are no backlog numbers in there. Uh, 1,740 hospitalizations, and today we're also reporting 31 deaths. Now, we haven't reported that many deaths in a single day since March the 10th, earlier this year. We are number one in the country for new case growth per capita. And as the states go, we have been labeled um, as a state of concern. And I would tell you, we would be the foremost state of concern in the country. That is not a distinction that we should aspire to. Right now, at least 83.7 of all of the COVID cases in our region is a result of the Delta variant. Um, and so anyone who is COVID positive in Louisiana should assume uh, that it is from the Delta variant. Uh, and ultimately, you have to take the same
precautions uh, regardless. Um, but we now know that the Delta variant means that you could be eight or nine times uh, as contagious as you would have been with the previous versions of COVID-19. I think that means that we all have a heightened duty then to make sure that we take all the precautions necessary when we are uh, positive by making sure you're staying home if you're able to stay home and, and uh, in, in terms of your symptoms and so forth, uh, but make sure that you're not exposing other people. In light of the trends and the developments, um, I can tell you that I have received over the last 24 hours or so numerous requests uh, from hospitals and healthcare organizations and other entities uh, to reinstate a statewide mask mandate. This is something that I am seriously considering. Uh, and it would be a mandate to do what we announced last Friday that we're asking people to do currently, uh, and that is to mask in public indoor spaces, regardless of your vaccination status. So if you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, um, we're asking you to do that. But we're going to review new data that came out of the CDC just today. Uh, we're going to continue to have ongoing discussions with public health and hospital officials uh, and others uh, before I reimpose uh, a mandate. You should also know that as of today, 45 hospitals in Louisiana have requested additional assistance with staffing capacity. The Department of Health is managing these requests. We are requesting additional staffing capacity from the federal government, specifically from Health and Human Services. Um, and they will actually have a team on the ground here this weekend to help uh, start that assessment. Uh, in another parallel effort, the Department of Health is uh, working uh, to execute a contract uh, to create another uh, 171 hospital beds worth of capacity uh, with respect to the staffing. Uh, that will certainly help, uh, but in all likelihood will not be nearly enough. And we're going to continue to look uh, at other hospitals and other staffing contracts as we move forward. Uh, just as a point of reference to sort of show uh, where we are and how quickly uh, the COVID situation has mushroomed, uh, in Baton Rouge right now, there are more people in the hospital with COVID than there was in the entire state just a month ago. And that's why it's important that people do uh, what's been asked of them. To, again, to be good citizens, to be good neighbors, to take care of one another, and to wear masks. Um, that is the most important thing we can do uh, to curb this hospitalization trend we have by reducing transmission. Um, and then the vaccinations are also incredibly important as well uh, to confer protection on individuals and protect them against severe disease that would result in hospitalization and death. Uh, and ultimately in the pandemic. So to sort of show the point about how vaccines are the best tool that we have to protect against severe disease, again, talking in terms of hospitalizations and death, fully vaccinated individuals are 25 times less likely to be hospitalized because of COVID. Fully vaccinated individuals are 25 times less likely to die from COVID. And fully vaccinated individuals are eight times less likely to contract COVID. And Joe's going to have more information for you in just a moment on the benefits of being vaccinated. And while it is true that, especially as it relates to Moderna and Pfizer, uh, which confer full protection two weeks after the second shot, and the second shot comes either three weeks after the first shot if it's Pfizer or four weeks after if it's Moderna, 
The simple fact of the matter is after the first shot, you do have more protection than you had before you got it. And more protection beats no protection every day. And the sooner you get that first shot, then the sooner you'll have the second shot and enjoy the full protection. So we're asking you to run, don't walk, to get your vaccine. And then as we focus on vaccines, it's also important to understand the importance of masking. Uh, we have to slow transmission and case growth. We have to give our hospitals a break. And so the appeal that we made last week, I am re-urging that now for all Louisianans, again, vaccinated and unvaccinated, for reasons that Joe will get into more in just a moment. But suffice it to, for me to say that the effectiveness on the vaccine was initially and is today measured in terms of the protection it affords against severe cases of COVID, cases that result in hospitalizations and deaths. It was not to prevent infections and infectiousness. And unfortunately, we are seeing breakthrough cases and those breakthrough cases are infectious. Uh, and with the Delta variant, it's infectiousness to a degree uh, that, that quite frankly is alarming, even in all of those individuals who don't have a severe case of the disease themselves. It can be a mild case uh, and, and doesn't require hospitalization or much treatment at all, but they are very contagious. And that's, that's what the new data is showing. That's what we're continuing to pour over. But that clearly is why masking is so important for vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals. <clears throat> so the Delta variant is a game changer. And at this point, it's not whether we vaccinate or mask, we have to do both. You know, when the facts change um, and you learn new things, as in the field of epidemiology and science you do all the time, you have to change your approach. You can't keep doing the same thing and just hope for a better outcome. And that is why the Department of Health last week uh, here in Louisiana actually uh, recommended to me that we make that change and start recommending that individuals be uh, masked whether or not they are vaccinated because the data was so compelling and what the trends were. And then earlier this week you saw the CDC come out and do the same thing. But we're getting much more information um, and it's coming in rapidly. We will be looking through all of that and make the best possible decisions going forward. I'm going to ask Joe to come up now and to uh, speak to you all. Uh, he's obviously got a lot of information for you. And then I'll come back up uh, once he's uh, finished with that. Uh, I would ask you to address your questions to Joe uh, while he's up here as, as best you can. Uh, and then I'll take your questions in a few moments as well. Good afternoon, Governor, on behalf of uh, myself, Dr. Phillips, and the Department of Health, we thank you for your leadership continued on this. Um, I'll, I'll tell you um, in complete um, sincerity, it is, it is unbelievable to be back where we are right now. Literal um, shock and, and I think and some disbelief too. And it, it is not an over-exaggeration to say it is as bad now as it has been at any point in the pandemic. And uh, what's, what's scarier than that is that the trajectory really has not yet showed any signs of slowing. Um, I think we take some comfort in knowing that um, we have been here three times before and, and we know 
how to get out of this. And as the governor said, it's, um, it's getting vaccinated. And right now, because we are in a surge, it's doing the extra steps of masking. And from the data that we're looking at, it, it really does seem that um, the only way that we are going to effectively mitigate this surge and turn this thing around is if uh, both people who are unvaccinated and vaccinated mask. Um, that really is what is going to be needed to, to stop the transmission. I'm going to go through um, some updated data points, um, give some perspective of, of where we are and what we're looking at, um, talk about the recommendations that are out there now, and then I'll be happy to answer any questions afterward. You've seen um, this version of the slide m many times now, and um, I'll, I'll walk you through it again. It really does continue to be um, remarkable in how bad it has gotten so quickly. Yet, yet again, I should say, in Louisiana. On the top left, you see COVID-like illness. Uh, this is the percent of ER visits um, this past week in the state that are attributable to, to people seeking care because of symptoms suggestive of COVID, like fever, cough, shortness of breath, malaise, and so forth. Uh, we are now up to 11.7% of all ER visits uh, is, is somebody coming in with, with COVID-like symptoms. And you'll note, if you can go back to the previous slide, please, you'll note that is the highest point that we have ever been in this pandemic. We have never had more people coming into emergency departments across the state with COVID-like symptoms as we do right now. And if you reach out to anyone that works in a hospital, they will tell you they feel that. The hospitals are literally bursting at the seams right now, and, and, and this, this shows why that is. On the top right of this graph, you'll see incidents, which is the number of new cases of COVID diagnosed every day, smoothed out over a seven-day average. We are now, if you want to look at it over a week's average, 349 new cases per 100,000 residents of Louisiana over a seven-day period. That's up 182% over the past two weeks, and it's up 923% over the past month. It's now higher than the first two surges we, we had. It's not yet as high as that third surge, that Christmas and New Year's surge. But as you'll note from that graph, there's not any sign yet that it's slowing. Not a single sign yet that this very steep rate of increase is slowing. You know, with COVID, Transmission begets more transmission. And we'll talk about Delta in a second, but it's more infectious. And the preliminary data coming out now suggests that one person infected with Delta will then infect an average of six to 10 other people. It's hard to turn that around if you don't change behavior. On the bottom left, you'll see percent positivity, which is those orange bars on the bottom. We are now at 13.2% of all uh, COVID tests are coming back positive. And we've not been that high since January 6th of this year. The purple line on top of that is testing volume. And as you want, might expect, testing volume has gone up the past couple of weeks as there's been more exposures and more people have these type of symptoms. We're on track to have a decent amount over 500,000 tests conducted in the month of July. And we haven't been in that range for a good three or four months. On the bottom right, you'll see the uh, number of patients hospitalized with COVID throughout the state. And, and this is really the graph that uh, we have the most focus on because we cannot jeopardize the ability of our hospitals to provide acute care to either COVID or non-COVID patients. We cannot jeopardize that. As of today, we have 1,740 hospitalized patients with COVID throughout the state, that number has increased by a factor of seven, seven times higher than it was a month ago. And again, just like cases, absolutely no indication yet that it is slowing. There's no question this is due to Delta. About 83% of all new cases of COVID in Louisiana are Delta, and now the national number is pretty much the same as that. Delta has swept across this country. And I will tell you, I have very little doubt that what we are experiencing here 
other states are likely to experience um, in the near future too. But Delta is uh, clearly more transmissible, it's more virulent, it's more aggressive than anything that we have seen yet. I'll talk more about that in a second. But that rate of increase for hospitalizations, now higher than that summer surge where we capped out at 1,600. And in that winter surge, we capped out at just a tick above 2,000. And if we continue on the pace that we are now, we'll likely hit that point very, very early next week, within a few days. I'm going to go to the next slide, please. To illustrate this point one more time, we have more patients presenting to hospitals with signs and symptoms suggestive of COVID. 11.7% of all ER visits in the state this past week, more than at any point in the past during this pandemic. 45 hospitals as of this morning have reached out to us for help, asking us for help with staff. You know, remember during the first surge, we were worried about ventilators and PPE. That was our limiting factor. Later in the, in the pandemic, physical space was our limiting factor. You know, thankfully, we have enough PPE, we believe, right now, and we have enough ventilators because we've invested in both of those over the past year, and we think we still have some physical space. But um, because it's uh, tough to get nurses these days after a very traumatic year for nurses, um, hospitals are having a really hard time staffing up. And we don't have the staff that we need to meet this burden. That's why 45 hospitals reached out for help, which we are working with them closely. Uh, across a range of options to bring in auxiliary staff, but it's not easy because the nursing shortage is not a state issue, it's a national issue right now. What hospitals have to do when they reach capacity is a couple things, uh, and, and these are all difficult decisions that hospitals have made on their own volition. Uh, they have to cancel or postpone non-emergent procedures. When you say it like that, it doesn't sound that bad, but it, it, it really has consequences. And, you know, most non-emergent procedures are only non-emergent for so long. <laughs> you put them off long enough, they become emergent procedures. And for someone who is scheduling um, a cancer procedure, remover of tumor, um, an important hip replacement that will allow them to get out of a wheelchair and walk, um, colonoscopies, um, biopsies, the postponement of these procedures have real consequences and sometimes they're hard to measure even. Um, but real, real consequences and hospitals know 100% the consequences of these actions and they have no other choice right now. They have to preserve capacity, staffing capacity to care for the patients that are walking in about to die. That's the choice that they're making and they have to make that choice and this has real consequences. Hospitals also, the bigger tertiary referral centers uh, have to go on what they call diversion, which means they can no longer accept transfers. Most of the time a transfer is not a lateral transfer. A transfer usually means that you're in a small outlying rural hospital that does not have subspecialty care in a lot of areas and the level of severity of a patient's illness exceeds the capacity of that small hospital to care. They don't have a neurosurgeon. They don't have a pediatric oncologist. They, they don't have whatever specialty it is that that patient needs. And that patient needs to be transferred in to a tertiary referral center. We are blessed with incredible hospital institutions in this state, backed by excellent academia, state of the art, that are full. And the patients that need their help, that have the unfortunate of living just a few miles outside of that parish, right now can't get in to receive the care that they need because uh, as I heard a colleague of mine say yesterday there's no room in the inn. That has consequences too and I think we're going to feel that more over the next week. There are some reasons why so many people are coming into the ER now with these type of symptoms both COVID and non-COVID related. Non-COVID we have a lot of RSV right now. RSV is a respiratory virus that we see every year, but never this early in the year. And there's a whole other conversation about why we're seeing so many cases this early. It's unusual to see that. Suffice it to say, it's taxing on hospitals, particularly children's hospitals, that are treating these, these patients now in greater numbers than they usually do this early in the season. 
We also have a lot of people that think they have COVID and, and very well might coming in with relatively mild symptoms or because they need a test. And I, I do want to um, ask uh, the people of Louisiana um, to be cognizant of this right now because hospitals are so very busy, because emergency departments are so very busy. I am asking you, if you have mild symptoms or if all you need is a test, please try and avoid emergency departments if possible. If all you need is a test, please look at other testing options. If your symptoms are very mild, I advise you to test outside of a hospital and stay home until your symptoms get worse, particularly to preserve the ability of hospitals to care for people that are more acute, more severe. If you do not know the best place to get tested in your area, call 211. I'll tell you, almost any large commercial chain pharmacy now offers testing. Testing is available at a number of other areas, including sites operated by the Louisiana Department of Health and, and the National Guard. Two and one can connect you. If all you need is a test or if your symptoms are very, very mild, please avoid a hospital for those services if you can right now until we get out of this surge. I'll also advise that the symptoms of COVID can be very vague and sometimes you can miss them. Even good docs can miss them if they're not always thinking about COVID. And now that we're in the surge that we're in, COVID is one, two, and three on your list <laughs> when you have any type of, of, of symptoms in terms of consideration. The classic symptoms of COVID are cough, fever, and shortness of breath. But there are a lot of minor symptoms that can easily be COVID that you might not realize. Sinus infection, runny nose, feeling tired, stomach aches. All of those can be COVID. Sore throat can be COVID. So I would advise people, if you have any of these symptoms at all, talk to your doctor and physicians out there, be very broad in your testing because the more COVID that we can identify, we can advise those individuals to be careful to quarantine and reduce the spread of that. If you are diagnosed with COVID, and you are not sick enough to be in the hospital, there is a treatment available that will help keep you out of the hospital. It's called monoclonal antibodies. The main one being given now is called Regeneron. And it's very effective at keeping people who aren't that sick from needing hospitalization if it's given quickly, if it's given within the first few days with somebody having symptoms. If you are diagnosed with COVID, and you're early in that process, and you're not in a hospital, I strongly advise you call your doctor or your medical provider, ask if monoclonal antibodies are indicated for you. And if they are, ask for their help to get you connected. Most hospitals in the state right now offer this treatment. It's given by infusion that usually takes an hour. It is effective at keeping people out of the hospital, and we can use every hospital beds saved right now that we can get. The next slide, please. We've shown this chart many, many times. It hasn't changed in a couple of weeks. When you look out on COVID-like illness, on new cases and hospitalizations, both as a state and all nine of our regions, we continue to increase. Not only are we at relatively historic levels, how high we are, but the rate continues to go up. Each of these three categories each of the nine regions of the state. Next slide, please. I want to talk a little bit about COVID in children, and I want to come back to this point, but Delta is different. The Delta variant is different in a number of ways. It's more transmissible. It's more powerful. It infects people in a way that makes them have up to a 1,000 times more virus in their body than the prior variants did. And unfortunately, it seems to be more apt to make kids sick. We are seeing more children sick with COVID now with Delta than we have at any other point in this pandemic. And what you see here is a graph of new cases um, broken out by age groups. And the number one age group in terms of new cases, 18 through 29-year-olds, followed second by people under the age of 18. These are people who are getting COVID spreading COVID and 
in rare but growing numbers of cases, getting very sick from COVID. I'll tell you, the average age of the hospitalized COVID patient in Louisiana right now is 54, and a month ago it was 64. The next slide, please. We, um, I wanted to break up a little bit more granular these pediatric infections. So this is that same graph just zoomed in on the age groups less than 30. Leading that is age groups 26 to 30, but just behind that is 12 to 17. And I make this point because people who are between that age group of 12 to 17 are eligible to get vaccinated. And only 12% of them across the state have right now. But we're seeing those individuals get sick. In the past two days, we have had seven new cases of multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children reported to the Louisiana Department of Health. That's the largest number in the shortest period of time of any point in the pandemic. All of those seven individuals were not fully vaccinated. Four of those seven individuals remain in the pediatric ICU. And these, these cases can get very, very severe. I, I fear that we're gonna see more of these in the coming weeks. This variant, this Delta variant, is attacking children in a way that we have not seen at any prior point in the pandemic. The next slide, please. Yet again, we had um, discussed this last week. Yet again, Louisiana leads the nation in the number of new cases per capita. We are the leading state in the nation in the number of new cases per capita without any sign of slowing right now. Next slide, if you look at the whole country, the heat map here of new cases is really centered around us and Arkansas and Missouri. Um, you know, I have, I have little doubt that this is gonna spread to other states and while we remain in the bottom five states for vaccinations, there's a whole lot of states that are only a few percentage points above us and, and I don't think that's gonna provide sufficient protection against this. Um, there's gonna be a lot more learned about how Delta spreads in the coming weeks. Most of that is gonna come from data from Louisiana to the benefit of, of other states. Um, we have been in this position before. We've been in the leading edge of these outbreaks before. And at this point, I think we know what we have to do to mitigate it. I'll tell you, the vaccines remain the single best way to protect one against the complications of COVID. Your next slide, please. Over the past week, 90.4% 90 of all new cases of COVID reported to us were in individuals who were not fully vaccinated. In that past week, 85% of all deaths, COVID deaths reported to us were in individuals who were not yet fully vaccinated. And of the 17, um, excuse me, 1,740 hospitalized COVID patients in the state today, 89.3% of them are not fully vaccinated. As the governor said, when you get vaccinated, you then have a 25 time reduction in your likelihood of dying from COVID, a 25 time reduction in your likelihood of being hospitalized with COVID, and an eight time reduction in your likelihood of simply contracting COVID. I wanna talk about that part a little bit more. What is different about Delta. And there is a growing body of evidence on this now and the CDC just an hour or so ago put out a new report really honing in on what I'm gonna talk about right now that we're gonna spend some time reviewing over the weekend. But if you do get infected with the Delta variant despite being vaccinated, what the data now suggests is you have an equal ability to transmit the Delta variant, the virus, to somebody else as somebody who is not fully vaccinated. In other words, of people who do get infected, and again, remember, if you're fully vaccinated, you have an eight times reduction in your chance of getting infected. But if you do get infected, what the data suggests now is that the viral load, the amount of virus in your body is just as high as the amount of virus in somebody who's infected with Delta and is not vaccinated inferring that people who are fully vaccinated and do get infected likely are able to spread it just as easily as people who are not vaccinated. 
That is the reason why the mask recommendation has been extended to people who are unvaccinated and vaccinated as well. Because it seems like with the preliminary data and with what was released today on very quick glance, it seems like the risk of transmission in vaccinated or unvaccinated is the same if you do get COVID. As the governor said, we saw preliminary signs of this in our own data last week, which led the state of Louisiana and the Department of Health to recommend masking regardless of vaccination status last week. The CDC did the exact same thing a few days later. The exact same thing a few days later, and the data continues to grow, pointing to equal transmissibility of people who are infected, vaccinated, and unvaccinated. And take a step back, um, as the governor said, the value in getting vaccinated remains extreme. There is every reason in the world to get vaccinated. It protects you against dying. It protects you against being hospitalized. But the protection is not absolute. And sometimes you need more protection. And we understand this in all types of other scenarios in life. Let me give you one example. If it's raining outside, if it's mild rain, you put on a raincoat, you go outside, you're going to be well protected against that rain. You're not going to get too wet. If it's pouring, if it's a summer storm, you're going to probably need an umbrella too. And we accept that. And as it relates to COVID, it's pouring right now. So vaccinations protect you. There's absolutely no question about against what you really fear, which is being hospitalized or dying. But what we now know from the data coming in, and again, we're going to spend some time this weekend to go deeper into that data, is that when it's pouring, when we're in the worst surge in the nation right now, you probably need more protection to reduce your chance of spreading to others. And that likely means masking up for everyone. Go to the next slide, please. If there's um, really any good news to share, it's that um, I think a lot of people um, have, have, have chosen to get vaccinated because of what they see happening in the state. And it's scary when you talk to people. I mean, it's, most people know someone who's sick right now. And, and if you don't, all over the news are, are people in, in hospitals um, talking about their illness. And a lot of them are sharing the fact that they really wish they had gotten vaccinated when they had the chance before they got hospitalized. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say that the pace of our vaccinations has picked up dramatically. Last week, we doubled the number of people who chose to initiate their vaccine series. And this week, we're on pace to double it again. So that'll be a four, fourfold increase over the past two weeks, going up from 2,000 new vaccine initiations a day to about 10,000 new vaccine initiations a day. Let me tell you, those people that chose to get vaccinated this past week, all of those people, that's a lot of people, they all changed their mind. They had not gotten vaccinated you know, up until that point, and they looked around and they changed their mind, and that's okay. It is okay to change your mind. Scientists do it all the time. I do it all the time. It is okay to change your mind. And if you have yet to chosen to get vaccinated, I would urge you to look around, talk to people who work in hospitals right now, just watch the news. It's the right choice for you, and if you haven't done it yet, that's okay. It's okay to change your mind and do it tomorrow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there. I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Yeah, Blake? Um, what does the trajectory look like as far as hospitalizations? And what do you, at what point do you expect hospitals to reach that crisis level of care? Well, I mean, I, I, the rate is as high as it's ever been. Um, and I, 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 I strain for ways to better articulate it, but... You know, 1,740 hospitalized patients is um, just below our first surge, just above our second surge, and just below our third surge. Again, with really no sign at all that it's, that it's slowing. You know, hospitals continue to have some levers at their disposal, but these are, not, these are levers that have really dire consequences. They can continue to stretch what they consider a non-emergent procedure to be, but um, that's not an easy, easy choice. They can continue to stretch a little bit um, staffing ratios. They can try and go from 
one nurse to five patients to one nurse to six patients, one nurse to seven patients, but, but those are all choices that, that have consequences to them. So you know, I, I would say they are approaching functional capacity now, they, they probably exceeded functional capacity earlier in the week or last week, and that's why they pulled the levers to do the procedures. Um, you know, I think they're, they're, they're all in crisis mode. There's, there's no way around that. Um, they're going to continue to do everything they can to save lives. You know, the hospitals are not going to throw up their hands, but there are consequences to that. How much uh, less protection um, do people with autoimmune diseases or, you know, or older because, you know, are more at risk because of their age or, yeah. or transplant patients have less protection um, f uh, f even if they are vaccinated? That's a great question and thank you for asking that. Um, they do have less protection. It's difficult now to precisely quantify it because the data is still coming on in it. But they, but they are more at risk and there's really two reasons why. Number one, they could have a condition, and I'm going to lump elderly people in with that. Yeah. They could have a condition, or they could, by, by virtue of age, just be an individual who, if they do get COVID, the consequences are going to be greater. They're going to get sicker. They're going to be a tougher patient to treat. They're going to be more likely to be put on a ventilator, be harder to get off that ventilator. Anytime you go into the hospital, if you have serious underlying conditions or if you're older, the risk is higher. Separate from that, if you have a condition that lowers your immune system, or if you're elderly too, you are likely to have a less robust immune response from that vaccine. It doesn't mean the vaccine doesn't work, it just means it's less work. You know, if, if someone with a normal immune system, let's say gets 95% protection from a vaccine, someone who's immunosuppressed because they are taking chemotherapy or they're taking chronic steroids or they have an underlying condition, they might get, I'm just gonna say 70% ballpark protection. Still, still significant, but not, not as good. The point being, um, we're surging right now. So people that are at risk, people that have underlying conditions or are of advanced age, vaccinated or not, right now, they need to be taking the most precautions of anyone. They need to be masking 100% of the time when they go indoors. And when they're outdoors, they need to be distancing. They need to be avoiding crowds if they can. They need to be thinking hard about what they can, can accomplish inside their home without going out for the next couple of weeks while we're in this surge because as you point out, their level of protection is less. They're more at risk. And a uh, quick follow-up, um, especially with what you were saying about how vaccinated people are more likely to transmit the disease and, um, you know, the fear that, you know, children could see this um, more, you know, more, there could be more um, severe COVID cases in children with school year coming up. Uh, is a mask mandate something that you'd support? I mean, the government just told you it's being, it's being considered. Yeah. I mean, I, I will tell you, people need to be masking. That's, that's the bottom line. If you're in an indoor, indoor space right now, you need to, need to be masking. If you're not, you're putting yourself and everyone around you at risk. There's no question about that. Yeah, one last question. It's kind of following along what he said. I need to get closer to this. It's kind of following along what he said. I mean, with kids going back to school, some parishes have said, hey, we're going to require a mask in yeah. school for kids. You kind of mentioned this last week. What was the, what's the LDH's stance on kids in school and masking, and what do you think or recommend? Recommend that they mask. And, and that's also the recommendation now of the CDC and the American Academy of Pediatrics. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kanner. I'm, I'm going to try um, to end on, on one of the more positive notes that were struck today. Um, our rate of vaccinations has improved here of late. Uh, we're now above 10,000 new shots a day. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, that was down around 2,000. So I, I want to thank all of those people who have decided uh, to be vaccinated and I want to encourage everyone who hasn't yet made that decision to in fact make the decision and be vaccinated. Uh, it is never too late to do the right thing, to confer this protection upon yourself and your family and your community um, and, and help us to, to end the pandemic. Um, 
it would be great. You know, we have, I think, uh, a little more than 1.94 million Louisianans right now who've at least taken the first shot. Wouldn't it be great if in a few days we could say we're over 2 million and then we're over 2.1 million and we just, we keep going. So I'm going to encourage Louisianans to do that. Uh, it remains free, safe, effective, and convenient with more than 1,400 locations where you can be vaccinated. You see the information on the screen. Please call 1-855-453-0774. That's the hotline to find out where you can be vaccinated. Or you can go to vaccines.gov. Um, I am well aware that it feels scary out there. In fact, it more than feels it, it is. We have a disease burden in our community. We have a rate of transmission that is dangerous. It is scary. And if you think you're tired of it, I'm gonna ask you to think about the plight of our healthcare professionals those respiratory therapists and nurses and doctors who are going to work every single day mentally, physically, emotionally exhausted. Let's do what we can for them. You know, they are heroes. We've been saying that throughout. But let's not take them for granted. Let's cut them some slack, give them a break. Let's reduce that demand on them. And by the way, there's the added benefit that you're protecting yourself from COVID and your family, and your community. But it's more than that. Because if a hospital is full and it doesn't have the staff to take care of another patient, it isn't just the next COVID patient that's gonna suffer that. It might be the next stroke victim or the next motor vehicle accident victim, the next heart attack, whatever it is. And I can tell you we have large hospitals in Louisiana that are declining transfers, not accepting transfers right now because they can't. There are real world consequences for that patient who needed to be transferred but couldn't because that hospital wanted to transfer that patient for a reason. So I will finish with a couple of points and then take some questions. Vaccinations are the best protection against serious disease, the best protection against hospitalization and death. Masking is the best protection against transmission of the virus. So please wear your mask when you are indoors in public spaces. Get your vaccine, wear your mask, keep your distance. I am praying for our state. I'm asking for your prayers, and I am appealing to you for your cooperation. And now I'll take a few questions. Yes, sir. Uh, Governor, many people got the vaccine under the impression that they could uh, return to normal life, not having to wear a mask, not having to social distance. Are you worried that if you re-implement some of these mandates that it will cause people to lose even more faith that these vaccines are effective? Yeah. Well, first of all, you worry about all sorts of things uh, when, when you're governor and you have to make these decisions. Uh, but the simple fact of the matter is um, that the vaccines – uh, were deemed effective after clinical trials at preventing severe disease. And they remain effective. The most effective tool we have at preventing severe disease. And you heard the numbers from Dr. Canner, and I'll say him again. You're 25 times less lack likely to be hospitalized. You're 25 times less likely to die. You're eight times less likely to be infected to begin with. And so the efficacy of the vaccines is not being called into question here. And the situation we had when we lifted the mask mandate was we had a very low level of transmission 
in the communities across Louisiana and indeed across the country. That is no longer the case. Um, and, and now we have the advent of the, uh, of the uh, Delta strain, which is much more contagious, uh, much more virulent, and so it has changed the game. Uh, and, and so individuals, even though they're less likely to become infected if they've been vaccinated, we do have breakthrough cases. And by the way, that was always going to be the case, right? It, it never claimed to be 100% effective anyway. And the breakthrough crisis ended up with people who are infected and infectious. And as it turns out, because of the viral load involved in, in COVID cases that are caused by the Delta strain, uh, they're very contagious. And so when the facts change, you have to change. But the facts remain this. The vaccine is the most important tool to protect your health. And the mask is the most important tool to protect transmission. And so doing both at the same time uh, only makes sense. And so that's what we're asking people to do. Um, and, and we're just going to tell the truth as we know it, based on the data and the science, uh, consulting with, with public health, with CDC, with, with hospitals and, and others across the state of Louisiana and outside the state. And, and when we do that, we're always going to do what, what is required uh, to protect public health uh, and do it in a reasonable way. Uh, and, and quite frankly, look, I understand that people don't want to wear a mask, but have you seen the people in the hospital struggling to breathe? Have you watched the testimonies given just this week in Louisiana in our hospitals by doctors and nurses and patients themselves? That mask is not an onerous burden to prevent that to prevent yourself from having it, or to prevent spreading the disease to someone else who might end up in the hospital. So we're going to do the very best we can. We're going to make the decisions that are, that are warranted uh, by the facts, by the science, by the data as we know it, and we will communicate as best we can. But if people are listening to what I just said, it really isn't that hard to communicate how important it is to be vaccinated, and how important it is to wear your mask. Yes, ma'am. Governor, what is it going to take for you to get to the point of, okay, we have to put this mask mandate in place? I know you mentioned that you have to look at the data, the facts. You guys are presenting some eye-opening data. So what is it going to take for you to make that decision, okay, we need to go back to a mask mandate? Yeah, well, we, we got some additional data from the CDC today. Uh, and we have additional consultations that will occur, I think, today and over the weekend. Uh, we want to make absolutely sure of the linkage uh, that, that we believe. In fact, we believed a week ago, right, because we got ahead of the CDC in making the recommendation that vaccinated people mask indoors uh, as well as unvaccinated people. Uh, we just need to take, I think, a careful look, continue to consult with, with doctors and in hospitals around the state of Louisiana. Um, and, and again, as I said in, at the outset, this is something that I am very seriously considering. And one of the things I hear is, well, this other state isn't doing that. Or, well, first of all, I'm not the governor of any of the other states. And if you saw that chart a while ago, Louisiana is at the very top of the list, and second place is a distant second in terms of case growth. Uh, so I won't be taking my cues from other states that aren't faced with the same situation that we are. We're going to look at the data, we're going to look at the science, we're going to look at the trends, uh, and we will make the decisions that are, are necessary. But to a very large extent, whether it's a mandate or a recommendation, the people of Louisiana ought to be doing this ought to be doing this. And if you, if you own a business and you want your employees to be safe, then they need to be masked. If you want your customers to be safe, then they need to be masked. If you want to, to slow the transmission and, and save lives and, 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 uh, and lessen the demand that we're placing on these, these EMTs and paramedics and you know, respiratory therapists and so forth, Put on your mask and go get vaccinated too. I have a follow-up to that. So 
Did I click it right? Oh, I have a follow-up to that. Would we be able to find out that answer in the next week? What's that timeline look like in the sense of you looking at that data? Oh, no, it, it, that it's soon. I, I think, uh, I think you, you can, one way or another, you're going to be hearing from me probably on Monday. Uh, we're going to be spending the weekend uh, pouring through the data, doing the work that we just laid out. Um, because quite, quite frankly, uh, if this is something that we are going to do, um, then there's, there obviously time is of the essence, right? And, and so we, we're, we're not going to uh, let the grass grow under our feet as we, as we do this. Yes, sir, in the back. Hi, Governor Edwards. Today it was announced that two of your staffers were uh, tested positive for COVID-19. Does this prompt you to get tested or any other of your staffers? Yeah, no, it didn't prompt me to be tested, uh, but thank you for the question. Um, so we have two uh, individuals who work in my office who tested positive. I wasn't a close contact, so it didn't prompt that I be tested, um, but I will tell you as a, a precautionary measure, uh, I was tested earlier today, along with many uh, people in the office. Um, and I'm sure they would have come and told me by now if I was positive. Uh, I, I know that the rapid test indicated it was negative and, and the PCR test results will come back this afternoon. I do not anticipate another notice today, uh, at least I hope not. Uh, with me, with me being positive, I was not a close contact to either either of these two individuals. Yes, sir. Um, Governor, beginning this weekend, 150,000 people will lose their unemployment benefits through a deal you struck with the legislature. Obviously, when that deal was struck, we weren't in this health yeah. crisis that we're in right now. Do you have any worries that uh, kicking those people off their benefits will worsen the health crisis in any way? Yeah. Well, well, first of all. Um, it's, it's worth noting that the benefits expire on September the 6th regardless. Uh, so we're talking about a, a few weeks here. Uh, legislation was passed that ties a permanent increase in benefits for state benefits uh, to the elimination of the enhanced benefit by July 31st, uh, which is, I think, four weeks, five weeks earlier than they would otherwise expire. Um, and, and so the, the decision was made that, that the trade-off was worthwhile to have a permanent increase in state benefits for the loss of, of a few weeks. And the good news here is that even, even with the report that came in most recently, we still have many fewer people who are renewing their claims uh, for, for benefits. Um, and so it was, it was a trade-off that, that happened as a result of legislation. It was, it was negotiated. Uh, and at this point in time, uh, those, those benefits will expire on the 31st, which I guess is tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes. yes. Last question. Who hasn't gone yet? In the back. What other tactics? Sorry. Come over here. What other tactics is the state considering to encourage people who are unsure to get vaccinated? Well, uh, we are continuing to talk to them to answer their questions. We're encouraging them to reach out to doctors and trusted sources for good information, not misinformation. Um, and, you know, right now we, we also continue with the shot at a million um, and uh, the, the large, largest grand prize winner of a, of a million dollars is yet to come. And a number of folks who are uh, going to be winning the uh, additional uh, $100,000 scholarships as well. Um, and so we, we are looking, uh, as you know, yesterday, the president asked states to consider a uh, $100 cash incentive uh, for vaccinations. Uh, we are looking at the funding that might be available for that. We don't have treasury guidance because this money came from treasury, can only be spent in accordance with, with the directives that they put out. But we're looking at that as well. Um, the, the, the most compelling message around why people should be vaccinated came from Joe Cantor a while ago when he talked about who it is that's ending up in the hospital right now, who it is that's, that's dying uh, from this disease. Uh, and, and so as we work together to end the pandemic, if we want to make sure that we don't go backwards in terms of business restrictions and, and losing uh, capacity of, of, uh, at our hospitals, if we want to make sure that we can actually end this pandemic, uh, then vaccination is the key. Uh, and, and people who previously have decided 
for some reason to either wait or you don't have to wait any longer. Um, and if you listen to the testimony of those people who are in the hospital suffering with COVID, uh, that heart-wrenching uh, testimony, those accounts, uh, then I think it, it can help you to, to make uh, your decision. And for those people who might have decided for some reason that they just weren't going to get vaccinated, reconsider that. Look at what is really happening uh, right now here in Louisiana and across the country and re reconsider that uh, and, and be vaccinated. So while we're going to continue to put out information that, that's good and reliable and while we're going to continue to do what we can to incentivize people, uh, we're asking people uh, to, to make sure that they make the best decision for themselves and their families to seek the input of their own doctors uh, and, and other health care professionals uh, so that they can uh, make that decision. I anticipate um, that, that we will be having a press conference on Monday. Uh, if so, we'll be putting that notice out at, at, at some point in the not too distant future. Um, I am going to finish by asking uh, our state to continue to pray. Uh, you know, I, I believe in the power of prayer. Uh, and I think the, the prayer, though, has to be accompanied by action. And so I'm asking people to do uh, what science and data tells us is absolutely essential right now. Mask up and get your vaccine. Thank you.